See this? It's a bottle of real life Nuka Cola Quantum. This means I am the right person for the job to tackle today's challenge. I had a bunch of different names for the challenge, but I decided to just go with the one that probably wouldn't get me flagged as some sort of drug abuser. So that means today we shall find out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas as a Nuka Cola superfan? It's a simple set of stipulations today, I can only use Nuka Cola branded weapons, and I'm also going to try and only heal with Nuka Cola drinks when possible. I say when possible because New Vegas has certain cutaways in the story where your character fully heals without any input from the player. The most notable ones are travelling to and from the fort and beginning the quest to protect President Kimball. But, Nurbit, wouldn't this have made much more sense in Fallout 4 due to the existence of Nuka World and all of its Nuka branded items? Um... So for my character, I go with a normal focus on melee weapons. The Nuka Breaker was going to be my go-to weapon today, which excited me, as we all know, how much I just enjoy melee builds. Plus, it's one I have never really used before. I could have gone with a focus on explosives also for the Nuka Grenade, as after all, they are the highest damaging grenades in the entire game if we're not going to count the Holy Hand Grenade from the Wild Wasteland trait. However, they require Nuka Cola Quartz to craft and there are only so many of those in the game, and I would rather use them as consumables, seeing how they also give some good buffs like added damage reduction. You can craft Quartz eventually, although the perk to do so requires you to reach level 22, and let's be honest, it's very unlikely I'll reach that higher level unless I decide to specifically grind for it, and that's never fun. Anyway, onto my tag skills and I go with melee weapons, survival and unarmed. A survival of 30 will let me craft Nuka Cola, but that's all I'll ever need as it's one of the very few consumables in the game which effects aren't amplified by increasing the skill. As for unarmed, well, simply put, a lot of the high level melee weapon perks also require you to have a high unarmed skill, so that's why I'm tagging that. Finally for traits, it's skilled and hot blooded. If I'm only healing with Nuka beverages, there's a high possibility I could be sitting under 50% health during longer combat encounters, so it seemed like a viable trait to invest in. I drop all of the pay to win items as fast as I can and get the scavenging doc's house for anything soda related. Sure enough, he has one in his fridge that he was no doubt trying to hide from me seeing how my skin has already turned a bluey purple due to all of the quantum I have no doubt consumed behind the scenes. It should go without saying, but as a blind Nuka Cola supporter I will not even be touching a bottle of Sunset Sarsaparilla, as it would go against everything my guy has ever known. I will be collecting the star bottle caps though, more on that later. I scavenge the town for more bottles but end up empty handed, so for the time I grab the snow globe in the graveyard and begin heading for Sloan. There's two reasons for that today. One for my usual path, and two, I know there are Nuka Colas just ripe for the taking. I'm only able to get three as nobody was selling any, but on the bright side I did pick up a few empty Nuka Cola bottles that I could no doubt make use of later when I try to craft my own. On the topic of making my own Nuka Cola, I will need some other ingredients, one of which is barrel cactus fruit, which just so happens to grow in and around Hidden Valley. This works well for me as I was going to be passing through here anyway on my way to the shortcut. According to the wiki, my best bet for a constant stream of sugary drinks is Michelle, the 188 trading post, as she can apparently sell up to 10 of them at a single time. I say apparently because during my first visit she had none, and spoiling this now, her stock didn't get much better throughout the rest of the playthrough. The trip here wasn't entirely worthless, I was at the very least able to buy some reinforced leather armour from the arms merchant. Probably could have saved myself 100 caps if I just walked down to Hoover Dam and took the stealth suit, which is just a better set of light armour, but oh well. On my way to Vegas, the Sarsaparilla fanboys must have caught wind of me as they sent their head tracker to hunt me down. Thankfully, with the power of teleportation, I was able to disappear into the darkness so that I may prepare myself before our next encounter. I sell everything that I do not need to the gunrunners and then double check the price of the Nuka Breaker. At just over 11,000 caps, I was going to need to get just a bit more money to say the least. Mind you, that's not a difficult thing to do in New Vegas. First, I needed 2,000 caps to get onto the strip, so I went and gambled at the Atomic Wrangler until they kicked me to the curb. Sitting at 6,769 caps, I pass the gatekeeper to the aisles, meet with Victor, and enter the Lucky 38. Thanks to grabbing the snow globe at the old Mormon fort along with the one from Good Springs and the one hidden in the cocktail lounge, I can get an additional 6,000 caps and can purchase the Nuka Breaker. For those of you unaware, the Nuka Breaker is a reference to the Fallout fan film and series Nuka Break. If you have never seen it, I highly recommend checking it out, and I'll even leave a link to the creator's channel in the description and pinned comment. My first victims are that of the dumpster jumpers in the alleyway just as you enter Freeside. It seems to act like a super sledge, meaning I already love it, but even better, it comes with a higher crit chance and upon landing a crit, does some additional electric damage, so yeah, it's a pretty solid weapon. 
I wasn't quite sure who to side with just yet, so I went and continued to put the weapon through its paces by killing Oris. That was just in case I decided to befriend the kings for the NCR. Noticing that the weapon was, for lack of a better word, cracked, I decided to put it to work and start gaining some levels. My first stop would be Black Mountain, but on my way I encountered an odd glitch. Before when he was chasing me I did manage to get away from Malcolm, but of course, as we knew, he is a fairly persistent individual. And while I was waiting at Sloan for the sandstorm in Hidden Valley to pass, he found me once again. Only this time he didn't say his usual greeting, but rather he responded with what he will say if you're one of the few people who talk to him afterwards and don't just splat him. I'm taken aback for a moment to be honest, he also doesn't walk away after the conversation. So considering he won't be needing his legs, I just take them instead. The centaurs in the fight pit are of no hassle, but when are they ever? Basically just blood bags of fresh experience no matter what level you are. I grab the Brotherhood Hollow Tape while I'm here as well. Technically, I will not need it, but it's good to have should I decide to enter the bunker early and wipe them out. I could probably do it now, but I'm still lacking in healing supplies. Although, that is about to change. Making my way to the top, I enter the room and go to fight Tabitha. Her super sledge is no match for my weaponized consumerism, allowing me to easily win the fight. It went smoother than I could ever have expected, seeing how she never managed to land a single blow on me. I use the experience from the quest to max out melee weapons and take the travel light perk. This helped to deal with her fellow nightkin, seeing how they were able to hurt me given that they have guns. Still able to plow through them though without losing a life, which is very nice. From Tabitha I got the storage key and could use it to get some supplies to sell, but even better, some Yuka cola victory. It heals a little more than the normal variant and also restores 19 action points. Granted, I'm not really using vats, but still it's a good bonus. With all of the weapons and ammo I get from Tabitha's compound, I'm able to get almost all of my money back from Mick. Considering how cheap Nuka Cola is, I'm overcompensating just a little bit in the caps department, but I'd rather be overprepared than underprepared. It was also around here I figured out I was going to side with House, and it was down to one simple reason. He supplied me with by far the most Nuka Cola. The shelves of the Lucky 38 are filled with the stuff, this therefore makes us good friends. Or perhaps he is just my dealer, who can say. Anywho, now was as good a time as any to stroll into the tops and begin demonstrating to the chairman why alcohol is overrated and radiation induced soft drinks are the new it thing. The Nuka Cola forms a healing barrier around me each time I consume a glass. It's like a worse version of Radchild, being only 2 points of health per second instead of 8. But considering I don't need to be at death's door and can take a drink from my sippy cup at the push of a button, I'd say it's a fair trade off. As for the man that we're here for, well not much to say other than this may be his most pathetic death yet. He kinda just slumps to the ground like a sack of potatoes. Now, as I said, I'm siding with House, be that as it may, I have an effective weapon and a craving for XP. This means the other two casinos are about to get a first class course in marketing. Normally the white gloves being able to block my attacks is a cause for concern, but given the sheer force behind every strike, I'm able to disarm most of them in more ways than one, I might add. Mortimer gets what he deserves, and because I can, I agree to help Gunderson find his heckin' son. The final white gloves attempt the old roasty toasty to which I counter with a good old smacky wacky. Ted is shaken but not stirred so I take him back to his father and practice my yes man run by telling him exactly what he wants to hear. At some point House is going to want me to investigate the Omerdas and I suppose potentially sign a peace treaty with them. Well, that I can do. Just sign here, and here, and here. With my business on the strip concluded, House wants me to head on over to the fort to give the robots a wake up call. That's all well and good, but I had another objective right now, making my way for the Mojave Outpost so I can have access to easy repairs. Well, to be honest that's one reason, I also wanted to improve my rep with the NCR just enough so I could help them save Kimball later. Didn't feel like skipping it today, and killing Ants for Jackson and checking on Nipton for Ghost is the fastest way to get accepted. Well, I probably could have also just given Prim to the NCR, but we all know that's never gonna happen so long as this man exists. Oh, I should also mention I tried to make my own Nuka Cola around this stage, Turns out it's called Homebrew Nuka Cola, all that means is it lets you play Brawl on it, but the weirdest part is that all of the empty Nuka Cola bottles I gathered don't work. I, for whatever reason, specifically need empty soda bottles. I guess my guy is afraid of copyright issues. Which, you know what, I can understand that. Thankfully, empty soda bottles are rather abundant, so it doesn't take long at all to find some. Better yet, the Mojave Outpost has got some of the Nuka Cola quartz I mentioned at the beginning, I just need to do the old Van Graaff's bathroom trick to get them. There's also a few bottles of ice cold Nuka Cola, basically they just heal a little bit more than the normal bottles. Still, they're nice to have, we'll probably guzzle down some of them when I pay the Brotherhood a visit. On to some brief ant slaughter to raise my spirits, and then it's back to the 188, and from there down to Boulder City for a little bit more NCR rep. 
The strangest thing happened though when I waited until morning. Excuse me, but are you the courier who caused all of that trouble in the tops? Why? Why do so many people at these games want to follow me? Anyway, onto the cans. Benny may already be deader than dead, meaning I have no use of his lighter, but that doesn't stop me from making sure that Jessup and his friends share a similar fate. They help to capture and shoot me, they die, it's just that simple. The NCR now really like me, so much so that when I'm on my way to Mark Hoover Dam on the map and grab another overexpensive snow globe, they send one of their fastest men my way to give me their number. It's a nice thought, but I know it's a fake number. Time to get back on track, it was off to Cottonwood Cove to see about finding that army. As I am making my way there from Novak, I made a point of getting Mr. Radical's radiation suit. I don't need it, but the less rads I must deal with underneath the fort, the better. Not much of worth going over on the way to the fort, a couple of golden geckos who don't understand the term personal space get educated so they won't make the same mistake ever again. So as you can see I am suffering from some limb damage, it's my torso I believe, but as mentioned the limb and any missing health are restored as soon as I take the barge up the river. Caesar takes and then gives me back the platinum chip before sending me down into the first of two bunkers I'll be visiting in the next five minutes. This one is fortunately beyond easy. Protectrons are some of the weakest enemies you will ever face, and while the turrets can pack a punch, every single one of them except the first are positioned in a way that by the time they see you, you can retaliate with a very deadly cola-induced strike. The blue light is from the quartz by the way, forgot to mention that that was another side effect of the juice. Caesar is pleased that I didn't do his bidding and sends me to properly finish off house. The thing is, no. So instead I turn the sign on Caesar and his men. Despite being a primarily melee oriented faction, they just crumple when you bring one of your own. Caesar tries to remember some of the basics of CQC, but rushing off into battle with a crippling head injury is not the best idea when you're facing down a man who is confident enough to attack your entire army head on wearing nothing but a scrappy jacket and a top hat. Once they're out of the picture it's back underground for the most annoying faction to deal with. Honestly I can par through their armour no problem. It's just the ones with Gauss rifles that tear me to shreds on more than a few occasions. I mean in this one I'm still standing and if you ask me if I can stand I should be able to fight. All I need to overpower them is for the super slam to activate. Of course it doesn't work with every hit, plus the nuka breaker is quite slow so less chance of it happening over using a one handed fast melee weapon. Super slam isn't the only thing that helps mind you, if the electrical critical takes effect it greatly speeds up the process. I think the Brotherhood and Power Armor take more damage from the Electrical Surge, but I'm honestly not sure. In the end it's just luck related until I can push through. Granted I probably could have just ran past them to the lower level, but that didn't seem very fun. Eventually I find the best way to deal with them one at a time was to lure them inside the clinic and hide behind these blinds so that they would funnel in slowly. This works better than I could have hoped and before long the reinforcements stop and I can head downstairs. I've mentioned this a few times before, but if you're able to fight through the top floor, then you will have absolutely no trouble down here. There are only three people kitted out in par armour, and Harden seems to have less health than the normal paladins. That's not to say it's entirely danger free, the room with all of the knights in recon armour can be an especially painful encounter if you're unprepared, or in my case, if you forgot to preemptively drink before heading in. Next attempt, things go much better and before you know it I'm changing their passwords and blowing up their house. With the Brotherhood out of the way, all that was left was the Boomers. I get asked a lot why I don't agree to the wager with George as you can get more money that way. Truth is, I know for a fact I would forget to return and get my money. Case in point, that's exactly what happened this time. I helped the Boomers due to the fact they shower you with experience, and this time I helped them all out except for Jack. For once, the ants were what caused me the most issue. I guess the electrical charge inside the Nuka Breaker reacted with the gunpowder in every strike because they kept exploding. Simply attacking them and backing away worked for those at the entrance and exit, but the ones near the nests would set off a chain reaction, vaporising the entire building and myself. Thankfully the solution was rather obvious. I just had to lead the ants away from the main area one at a time and once they were out of the blast zone so to speak, I could deliver the killing blow and then back up just enough so I wouldn't be caught in their much smaller explosion. Once they were cleared out I was idolised and so I got to raising the bomber. As I was in the area I decided to grab a couple of the star bottle caps nearby. I was initially concerned about the Cazadors, but then I remembered electric types are super effective against flying types, so I was really worried for nothing. There's only a couple of star caps around here, but the real hunt will begin shortly. With the boomers convinced, it was now time to try and save Kimball. I get permission to use my weapon, so I just stand prepared at the sniper's nest by implementing the old meat grinder technique, and as you might expect, it works like a charm. 
With him out of the way, I disarm the bomb and the vertebird, tell Grant about said bomb, and then rather than confront the second assassin, I just steal his detonator to make doubly sure that nothing goes wrong. Doing things in this order not only causes Kimball to flee the scene as slow as feasibly possible, but it also causes the assassin to just freeze in place and never move. He was still there even after the quest was finished. With that out of the way, all that was left was to part the Eldorado substation and start the final quest for House. But before that, it was time to gather 50 Blue Star bottle caps. I already grabbed a majority of them during the run since I knew this was one of my goals, so here is just some of the final ones I went to get. I got stars from the 188 Trading Post, Bighorn Saloon, Field Shack, the Crimson Caravan Company, Camp Golf, the Grub Hub, which had its own problems to deal with, the sunken Sarsaparilla truck, and finally a random house in Prim. With 50 star bottle caps, I made my way over to the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters to have a chat with Old Festus. He gives me the real fake prize, which I proclaim is terrible, and so I travel further into the facility to find a set of double doors, which hides a metric ton of worthless sheriff badges, the corpse of Alan Marks, and the real prize for the quest, the unique laser pistol, Pew Pew. Now, I of course won't be using that as it's not a Nuka Cola branded weapon, but as a super fan of Nuka Cola, I of course cannot allow this thing to exist. So, with all of the sheriff's badges and Pew Pew in my inventory, I make a quick trip from Prim into the Divide. I then position myself on a nearby rock overlooking the Valley of Instant Death and cast both the badges and the laser pistol into the depths of the abyss below, never to be used or seen again, making sure that the Nuka Cola branded weapons remain supreme in the Mojave. Well, now that incredibly stupid task is over with, I make some more Nuka Cola as well as buy as much as I can from different vendors before beginning the final battle. In all, I was headed into the fight with 46 bottles of normal Nuka Cola and about one or two bottles of the other variants. Seeing how each bottle of the base variant heals for a total of 50 hit points over 25 seconds, I actually have a good amount of healing supplies. It's easy enough to engage the Legion in their small groups and once they're dealt with, chug a bottle and then wait around until it's finished healing me before I move on to my next encounter. This will only be an issue when facing the Legate, as he is much faster than me, and as such, running away to heal is not an option. The fight towards him is rather straightforward with this strategy. The only mild annoyance is without the speech skill to distract the NCR heavies, I have to kill them, and as a result make enemies of the NCR right at the end of the run. Fortunately, the only NCR soldiers I have to come into contact with are inside the dam, so they don't really stand a chance in these small, confined hallways. Making it topside and have a few more legion to cut through, although the joyous siding with Mr. Hauser Yes Man is that their reinforcements in the second half absolutely wipe the floor with whatever the legion can throw at you. Inside the camp, the Praetorians rush me first, but so long as you block their ballistic fist, you can counterattack while they're recoiling, and more often than not, you can decimate them before they even have a chance to respond. So when it came to the Legate, rushing him was a very bad idea. I wasn't lucky enough to trigger Super Slam, so he just kind of parred through my attacks until his two nearby guards walked up and all three of them proceeded to quickly pummel me to death. Second try, and I figured that using the rapid attacking trick so that he won't engage in dialogue could be effective in letting me walk right past him and deal with his backup first. This worked incredibly well, until it didn't, and Lanius hit me with the game crashing strike. Rebooting the game, and on the third attempt I do the same trick, and this time it doesn't freeze, but instead I am killed anyway when I feel to output enough damage to deal with the Legate. Fourth go around and it's the same plan again, as it is honestly the best path to victory. Sure enough, luck is on my side this time, not only did Lanius throw a grenade that hurt himself and his men, but I was able to take them out and then hit the Legate with a super slam attack. Once the Legate is knocked down I can keep swinging away which causes more knockdowns to occur, effectively stunning him until I can win the fight. A few more Legion reinforcements show up with chainsaws, but they're nothing to worry about. A few smacks disarms them, or outright kills them, allowing me to approach the gate and greet the general. I had maxed out my barter skill during the run to cut down on repair costs, so I was able to use this to strike up a deal with the NCR. I've never done that before when siding with House I believe, so that's neat. Speaking of, the man himself approaches me, finishing the game and proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas as a Nuka Cola superfan. I would say it was quite an enjoyable run, but we know that's always the case with melee weapon builds for me. I joked about it at the beginning, but if people want to see it, I could definitely try this idea again in Fallout 4 at some point. Making use of all the items in Nuka World could be a lot of fun. Regardless, that's going to be in this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like and you're interested in more challenges in the future. Feel free to subscribe to one of these videos. My name is Nervous. I'll see you all in the next video.